Flowers are the most beautiful gift of nature. Flowers and flowering plants form an exceedingly important part of nature. A flower is the reproductive structure found in flowering plants. The biological function of a flower is to mediate the union of male sperm with female ovum in order to produce seeds. The primary purpose of a flower is reproduction. So flowers are really very important. Along with this, flowers provide color to the surroundings and moreover, if there were no flowers, many plants would be impossible to classify according to botanical type. So let us find out in detail about this beautiful gift of the God. Hello students, I welcome you all to today's lesson about the special parts of flowering plants which is concerned with reproducing the species and that part is the flower. Almost all of you are familiar with beautiful flowers such as the blossoms of roses, orchids, and tulips. The kingdom plantae accounts for the largest proportion of the earth's biomass with its approximately 2,50,000 species of mosses, liverworts, ferns, flowers, bushes, vines, trees and other plants. Flowering plants are more widespread than any other group of plants. They bloom on every continent from the bogs and marshes of the Arctic tundra to the barren soils of Antarctica. These flowers play diverse roles in the lives of humans. Basically, flower plant the O part hai, jo fruit banaunda hai. Sare flowers which four basic parts hunde han. Jime ki sepals, petals, carpels ate stamens. Different flowers which a alag alag part de different numbers ate different shapes hunde han. So our nature the is beautiful creation bare janiye. Par details which jan to pehla, aj de lesson de learning objectives nu jan laiye. On completion of this topic, learners will be able to define a flower. Describe the different parts of a typical flower. Explain the relative position of floral parts on the thalamus. Explain the different forms of calyx. Describe the different forms of corolla with suitable examples. List the functions of calyx and corolla. Describe androsium and gynosium. Explain standard technical terms describing androsium and gynosium. Flowers are the reproductive structures of plants which belong to the group known as angiosperms or flowering plants. This group includes an enormous variety of different plants ranging from buttercups and orchids to oak trees and grasses. There are about 2,50,000 known species of various types of plants. Whether eye-catching or inconspicuous, all flowers produce the male or female sex cells required for sexual reproduction. So flower is defined as the reproductive structure of a flowering plant consisting of the pollen shedding anthers and pollen receiving stigmas and usually showy petals and sepals which function to attract pollinating insects or birds. In brief, these are the sexual reproductive structures of the angiosperms typically consisting of essential parts like gynosium, androsium and non-essential parts including petals and sepals. 
A typical flower is made up of four kinds of units arranged concentrically, which are sepals, petals, stamens and carpels. Students, let us discuss all these parts in detail. Parts of a flower The stalk of the flower is called pedicel. It exposes the flower in favorable position for pollination. Such flowers will be called as pedicillate. There is an outer whorl or covering called sepals. These provide protection to the flower in bud condition and are usually green in color. Inner to the sepals is another whorl of modified leaves called petals, which are often brightly colored to attract insects. The sepals and petals are collectively known as calyx and corolla respectively. Inner to the corolla are the male reproductive structures called stamens. Stamen is made up of anther and filament. Anthers are usually bilobed or may be single lobed. These anthers contain pollen grains. The terminal part of the shoot which gets modified as a flower and supports all the floral appendages is called thalamus or receptacle. In the very center of the flower are the female reproductive organs. The female part of a flower is known as carpal, consisting of a basal swollen ovary, which contains one or more ovules, a style and the sticky stigma. Students, A Tasi ek typical flower de structure bare jankari. To si vekhya ki flower basically char tara de concentrically arranged whorls de bane hunde han. Har ek whorl vakri kisam da hunda hai. Ate har ek whorl da flower di growth which specific role hunda hai. Flower de structure bare padan to baad hun asi thalamus upper lage. Floral whorls the different relative positions bare study karange. Relative position of floral whorls on the thalamus. The arrangement of floral whorls on thalamus varies greatly. It is basically of three types based on the position of calyx, corolla and androsium in respect to the ovary. These are hypogyny, perigyny and Epigyny. Let us discuss these arrangements one by one. Hypogyny. In this type, the thalamus is convex and ovary occupies the highest position on it. The other three whorls lie below the ovary and the ovary is said to be superior and other floral whorls are inferior as shown in the visual of Brassica. The other plants which exhibit this type of pattern is mustard, china rose, brinjal, etc. Next type of arrangement is perigynous. In perigyny, the ovary is centrally placed in a concave, cup-shaped or flask-shaped thalamus bearing floral parts at the margins of thalamus. It means the floral parts arise from around the ovary and not below it as shown in the visual. In this case, the ovary is said to be half superior hair. Last type of arrangement is epigynous. Epigyny. Here, the thalamus surrounds the ovary completely. As clear from the visual, 
in this type, ovary is completely inserted and wall of ovary is fused with thalamus as found in cucurbita. In epigynous condition, ovary is said to be inferior as the other walls arise above it. Students, this is all about the arrangement of floral appendages on thalamus in which we studied three types of conditions. After this, let us study about the two non-essential whorls that is calyx and corolla and their various forms and functions. Calyx, forms and functions. The green sepals collectively termed as calyx, form the outermost whorl of the flower. These provide protection to the flower before it opens and is in bud condition. They are usually green. There are various forms of calyx. Forms of calyx. Calyx is composed of sepals which may be free or united. The term gamosepalus is given to fused sepals as shown in the visual. Plants like Pisum sativum or pea and Solanum nigrum or mako show this condition. If all the sepals in a calyx are free, it is called as polysepalus. It is found in hibiscus or shoe flower as shown in the visual. So this was about calyx and its two forms based on free and few sepals are named as gamosepalus and polysepalus calyx. After this, we will quickly check out the functions of calyx in a flower. Let us now list out the main functions of calyx. Functions of the calyx. Support to the thalamus and other floral parts. Protect the internal floral organs. Attracts insects. Perform the function of photosynthesis. Store food. Students, this is all about the calyx. After studying the outermost whorl of the flower, now it is time to study the whorl inner to calyx, which is known as corolla. Let us discuss it. Corolla Forms and Functions Inner to the sepals is another whorl of modified leaves called petals which are often brightly colored. This whorl is known as corolla. Like the calyx, the corolla has various forms. Forms of corolla. The corolla is also composed of petals which may be free or united. If all the petals are united, or there is any degree of fusion between the petals, corolla is said to be gamopetalous, as shown in the visual. In ipomia and petunia, petals are united and hence known as gamopetalous. If all the petals are free from one another, then the corolla is said to be polypetalous as shown in the visual. This type of condition is found in Brassica campestris. Students, so to see janea ki corolla gamopetalous vi ho sakde han ate polypetalous vi. Petals di arrangement ate form de anusar e kai tarade hunde han. So let us discuss these different types in brief. Forms of gamopetalous and polypetalous corolla. Cruciform. In this type, 
the four free petals are arranged cross shaped and each petal has a claw and limb this type is found in brassica campestris or mustard next type is caryophyllaceous in this type five free petals with long claws and limbs are placed at a right angle to the claws dianthus has a caryophyllaceous corolla next type of corolla is rosaceous here five or more than five free petals are there having a reduced or sessile claw and limb as found in rose next type of corolla is papilionaceous in this type five free petals are unequal in size and arranged in butterfly like manner one large posterior bilobed petal called standard or vexillum which overlaps the two small lateral petals called wings or ailae the wings further overlap the two innermost smallest and fused petals forming a boat called keel or carina as found in p tubular in this type corolla has a tube like structure as found in disc floret of sunflower next type of gamopetalous corolla is campanulate gamopetalous and bell shaped corolla is found in this type campanula has this type of corolla next type of corolla is in fundibuliform gamopetalous and funnel shaped corolla is present in this type as found in petunia next type of corolla is bilabiate in this type of gamopetalous zygomorphic and two lipped corolla is formed if both the lips are wide open it is called as ringent as found in salvia and if the lips are placed close together then it is known as personate as found in antirrhinum last type of corolla is ligulate in this type corolla is strap shaped five petals fused to form short narrow tube below and this splits on one side and become flattened like a strap as in ray floret of sunflower so students now we are familiar with the calyx corolla and their forms which vary to great extent in their shape size and structure after this we will quickly check out the functions which the corolla performs in a flower let us list out the main functions of corolla functions of the corolla protect the stamens and carpels attract insects for pollination regulate the entry of particular insects by forming various shapes so students after discussing arrangement of floral appendages like calyx and corolla on the thalamus their forms and functions now let us quickly study male and female reproductive parts of a flower let us first focus on androecium 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 is the essential whorl present inner two petals which consists of stamens or the male reproductive part of a flower the male parts of a flower consists of one or more stamens 
and each stamen is made up of a knob-like structure called as anther and a slender stalk like filament as shown in the visual further you can see that the minute rounded bodies known as pollen grains are produced by the anthers which are the orange or yellow structures each anther usually consists of two anther lobes connected by a connective students a flower de male reproductive part de structure bare jankari si tusi vekhya ki flower de male parts vich stamen hunda hai jo anther ate ik filament nal milke banda hai there are different forms of androecium which vary to a great extent in their form and are of different types now let us get familiar with some of the common technical terms concerning androecium monoedelphus if all the stamens are united or their filaments are fused as in hibiscus diadelphus if filaments are fused to form two bundles as in pea and polyedelphus if filaments fuse to form more than two groups as in citrus if anthers as well as the filaments are fused we term the condition as synandrous which can be seen in cucurbita if the stamens are indefinite and free as in ranunculus we term the androecium as polyandrous now depending on the adhesion of stamens that is joining of stamens to other parts of a flower technical terms used are epipetalous when stamens adhere to the petals by their filaments as seen in solanum gynandrous when stamens adhere to the carpels as seen in calotropis or arc students this was all about the androecium after studying the male reproductive part now it is really important to study the female reproductive part which is known as gynoecium let us discuss it gynoecium gynoecium is the term for the innermost or central whorl of the flower appendages that is the carpels the female reproductive part that is carpel consists of the stigma style and ovary as shown in the visual these three structures are often termed as pistil a pistil may consist of a number of carpels merged together the sticky tip of the pistil the stigma is the receptor of pollen the stigma may be lobed funnel shaped branched or feathery the ovary is a basal swollen portion of the pistil and contains one or more chambers or loculi and accordingly the ovary is known as unilocular bilocular trilocular or multilocular these loculi contain one or more ovules from the ovary extends a tubular structure called the style the style becomes the pathway for graving pollen tubes to reach the ovules carrying the reproductive material students this is all about the structure of female reproductive part of a flower collectively known as gynoecium which further consists of the stigma style and ovary after this let us quickly study the different forms of gynoecium 
which are classified on the basis of number and free or united carpels. In a monocarpillary condition, gynosium comprises of a single carpel. Example, leguminosae family. Bicarpillary comprises of two carpels. Example, acanthaceae family. Multicarpillary comprises of many carpels. Example, papaver. Depending on cohesion of carpels, gynosium is said to be apocarpus if gynosium comprises of two or more free carpels. Example, venonculus syncarpus. If gynosium comprises of two or more fused carpels, Example, hibiscus. Students, before concluding this topic, I just want to share a fact regarding flower. That technically, a flower is a modified shoot. That is, it consists of a stem axis bearing leaf bodies. Well, students, this concludes our today's lesson. Let us summarize all that we have learned so far. Flower is defined as the reproductive structure of a flowering plant consisting of the pollen shedding anthers and pollen receiving stigmas and usually showy petals or sepals which function to attract pollinating insects or birds. All flowers have four basic parts, sepals, petals, carpels and stamens. Different flowers have different numbers and shapes of these parts. There is an outer whorl of sepals. These provide protection to the flower in bud condition and are usually green. Inside the sepals is another whorl of modified leaves called petals, which are often brightly colored to attract insects. The sepals and petals are collectively known as calyx and corolla respectively. In the very center of the flower are the female reproductive organs. The female part of a flower is known as carpal, consisting of an ovary which contains one or more ovules, a style and the sticky stigma. Androsium is the essential whorl present inner two petals which consists of stamens or the male reproductive part of a flower. Gynosium is the collective term for the innermost or central whorl of the floral appendages that is the carpels. The arrangement of floral appendages on thalamus is basically of three types, hypogyny, perigyny, and epigyny. So students, enough for today. Let us quickly check with some short questions what you have grabbed today. Be attentive, here are some questions. First question, name the four basic parts of a typical flower. Answer, four basic parts of a typical flower are sepals, petals, carpels, and stamens. Next question. Name the plant with inferior ovary. Answer. Cucurbita have an inferior ovary. The next question is. Name the arrangement in which ovary occupies the highest position. Answer. Hypogyny is the arrangement in which ovary occupies the highest position. The next question is, name the plant with half superior ovary. The answer is, rose plant has a half superior ovary. My next question is, which type of corolla is found in Brassica compastris? The answer is, cruciform type of corolla is found in Brassica compestris. My next question is, which type of calyx is found in Pisum sativum and Solanum nigrum? 
आंसर गेमोसेपिलिस टाइप ऑफ कैलिक्स इज फाउंड इन पाइसम सेटाइवम एंड सोलेनम निग्रम माई नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज नेम द प्लांट विद केरियोफाइलेशियस कोरोला द आंसर इज डायंथस हैज अ केरियोफाइलेशियस कोरोला नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नेम द प्लांट विद अ फनल शेप्ड कोरोला आंसर पेटूनिया प्लांट हैज अ फनल शेप्ड कोरोला Hope I have made a successful attempt to clear all your concepts regarding parts of flower which will help you in fetching good marks in the exam. Thanks for your cooperation and attention. Looking forward to the next class. See you then. Thanks.